common question that I get from intermediate level players is one, how can I play faster? And two, how can I be more familiar with the fretboard of the guitar? Um, and I've been there on both of those. But what we're talking about right now is a way that for me, uh, I've always felt connected to the fretboard. I found some patterns on the fretboard. Uh, and I basically want to describe that for you. Um, it's a concept that I call the three shape method. Um, there are other methods and, and kind of strategies out there for unlocking what the fretboard is. This is initially as a concept less about bluegrass and flat picking. We will find ways to you know, connect back to that here in just a minute. But the point is, is that you know, notes exist all around this fret, all up and down the fretboard of this guitar. And it's good to have some kind of system in play, some kind of way to notice these patterns that are, that are available. And again, you, you might discover some, some other methods. I don't present what I have here as you know, the perfect or the tried and true. It's worked for me. It's something that I've kind of gravitated to organically over the years since I was younger and starting to have some of these same questions of how can I, how can I feel more fluent on the fretboard? Uh, a lot of times we look at playing an instrument like communication. You know, we want to know that we have uh, the kind of vocabulary that we need to be able to communicate the way we want to communicate. So, you know, for a lot of intermediate level players, that means getting off of the way we've played tunes maybe for years <clears throat> that involve a lot of open strings. And so <clears throat> one of the reasons that we look at these closed scales is to immediately, you know, assign or associate a group of notes. So sort of the patterned experience that we have playing a scale lowest available note to highest available note. Uh, we recognize that because there's no open strings, we can move those all over the fingerboard. Um, and a key thing to kind of connect us back to bluegrass playing and certainly playing fiddle tunes and playing up and down the neck is that, as we've covered a few times here on the site to this point, the melody of the tunes that we play are connected to a scale all the time. The majority of the time, most of the tunes we play will primarily be connected to the major scale of the key that they are in. <clears throat> you may find some um, adjustments or some adaptations here and, there, here and there, and we'll get actually a little deeper within that in the advanced curriculum, but to get this conversation really started about how to just unlock the fretboard and how to really start experiencing some music on the fretboard. You know, we want to, again, appreciate and kind of accept the idea that, that we can be playing familiar tunes but in unfamiliar spots of the fretboard, but that connection to the tune can really be a guide, you know, and one of the things just to kind of keep covering some some things that we've talked about um, in various parts of the curriculum is not just memorizing a song one way, but even getting to this point where we can vocalize that tune, basically get the tune off the guitar, out from under our fingers, and really vocalize it and use our voice to sort of hear the tune, like with Billy in the Low Ground. Right? I know that song. I'm not limited to that sort of what we call muscle memory of, of one way to play the tune. Uh, and that, that internalized version of the song can operate kind of like a musical GPS. Um, as I'm in an unfamiliar spot in the, in, on the fretboard, I, I know this tune. So even though I may not be 100% familiar with where that exact note is, I have the imagery of the song in my head. I, I have a sense of what the target is. I can tell when I'm right or wrong. And that's just such a powerful kind of thing. Um, so to really get started here with this three shape method, let me explain what these three shapes are. And when I say shape, what I mean are small little keys, little, little groups of notes that kind of unlock bigger doors of note possibility on the fretboard. And again, this is just something I gravitated to years ago and continue to use. Um, and these three shapes are an F chord shape, a D chord shape, and an A chord shape. And when I say chord, let's remember that chords are based out of a triad, the root, the third, and the fifth. Uh, the way I find these and the reason I call these F, D, and A is because that's sort of what, for me, relates to their first position. It's kind of most basic self. There's the F shape, where it's, as you'll notice this as kind of the top three strings or top three notes of this standard F chord. There's that F root, there's that C, there's the A. And immediately I want us to think a little less about the fact that that is those notes or the fact that this is D, A, and F sharp or A, C sharp, and E and more about how that shape feels. You know, 
know, this one uses an open string, but as soon as we move it up, now we have a shape that we can move anywhere on the fretboard, and all these operate just like that. So at any one of those points that I could stop, I'm going to be connected to a major scale associated with that little shape. And, and one of the main themes here is as we do this work, what we are covering here and trying to just sort of uncover really is a, is a methodology. This is not a, a you know, learn the fretboard quick kind of scheme. This is, you know, involves a lot of work, a lot of, um, uh, you know, a lot of patience with yourself because again, we're learning kind of new things or, or, or new ways to do some of the old things. So, for instance, if I play this F shape, there's another F chord here with, it, with what is now the D shape. And then that F chord happens again with what is called the A shape. And that's a certain pattern that shows up all up and down the fingerboard. So F, D, A. If I start with the D chord, now with then starting with D in the pattern, D, A, F. All right, so this is a way to get this started. Just sort of noticing this. If I start with a C chord here, an A shape, for where I am in the pattern, it'll be an A shape, an F shape, then a D shape. And we hear that C triad in all those little shapes. And again, that's a way to get started, but really what we're looking at, and I'll continue to cover this with some other demonstrations, and ultimately work towards a version of a tune working through these various shapes. Mm -hmm.